A footing schedule is much like a column schedule, but it's created in a slightly different way. Let's go ahead and take a look at how a footing schedule is put together. To begin with, we're just going to come up here to the top of the screen, go to the View tab on the ribbon, and then we're going to create a new kind of schedule. This schedule is going to be a schedule and quantity schedule. In fact, it's probably the most common kind of schedule that you would use. So we're going to go ahead and click on that. Next, we want to be able to create just a new schedule for these particular footings. So we're going to come down on the list, and one of the things that you'll notice is that there really isn't a structural footing schedule here. So what we're going to need to do is a structural foundation schedule. So structural foundations, and there's two different ways to go about doing this. One's a schedule building components, and the other is a schedule key. Now, traditionally, what you really want to do is a schedule building components. The reason is that this is the kind of schedule that will schedule automatically based on the properties of the objects that happen to be inside of the model. A schedule key, on the other hand, is a manually filled in schedule that you can take the time to just type in all the information for it. Every once in a while, you'll find a schedule key is more appropriate, but for this kind of work, this kind of schedule, a schedule building components makes a lot more sense. So we'll go ahead and come down here and click on OK. The next thing we need to do is fill in the information that's going to actually be on the schedule itself. But the first thing we're going to want to add to this is going to be the type mark. So we're going to move down here and select on type mark and click on add. The next piece of information is going to be the type. So move up here, find type and click add. Now we're going to do this for two more columns. One is going to be for width and the other is going to be for length. So this is all going to be reporting information about these footings. Once you have these in place, the next thing we want to do is go over to the next tab, and this is going to be the filter tab. Now, right now, anything that happens to be considered a structural foundation is going to show up on this schedule if we would just click on OK to that right now. And that's really too much information for what it is that we want to be able to generate a report on. So as a result of that, we need to set up some special conditions here that's just going to pick out those items that we want it to pick out. So in order to do this, we're going to come in here and we're going to set up a filter and it's going to be based off of the type mark that we put in here from fields from the step before. Now that type mark can equal or does not equal or can be any of this information we see here on the pull down list. But in this case, we're going to start with begins with. So we'll come down here, select with begins with, and the information we're going to enter in is going to be the letter F. And then we're going to put a little, and it's going to look like a minus sign. It's a dash in there. After we've done that, we're going to move over to the next tab, which is sorting and grouping. And we'll come back and show where this property is associated with those particular footings that we need to schedule. So we're coming here to schedules and grouping next. If we want to put this in a specific order at this point, we could. We could tell it to sort by the type mark or the type or whatever the case may be. For right now, I'm just going to leave this at none. But if there was a specific order we wanted it to be in, so it would be A first, Bs, Cs, whatever, then we could just do that by the type mark, for instance. All right. The next option down here is going to be either grand totals or itemize every instance. Well, in this case, I have so many of these Fs that I don't really necessarily need to itemize every instance. Just anytime there's one that's different, then I want it to show up on the schedule. So I'm just going to clear out the box that says itemize every instance because I don't want a 20 category long thing to have to deal with. But I will put grand totals down here. And uh, the, the reason is I'd like to have a sort of a total count of what all my different foundations are going to be inside of the project. I'll point out as well that there's a formatting as well as an appearance tab. Underneath the formatting tab here, we can see that there's a type mark, there's type, width, and length. If any of these had information that could be calculated, such as cost or total square footage or something along those lines, then we could put a check mark next to calculated totals here. And then when it came time to do the totals, like we saw here in sorting and grouping, it would automatically tell us what the total either cost would be, total square footage would be that kind of information. Now we have all the information I believe on here that we pretty much need. So we're just going to come in here and we're going to click on OK for right now. Right now, the schedule is showing up as being blank. And the reason is, is we put that filter in on that second tab that we had going across the top and it had the F and that minus sign right next to it. Well, everything is blank because there currently are no foundations that have that F and minus sign next to it currently loaded inside of the model. So that's something we're going to need to do now. If we come up here to the little house, the 3D view, and select on it, we can then spin this around. 
by holding down the shift key and the wheel on the mouse. And we can see each of these footings that we have, or in particular, what we really care about are each of these rectangular shapes right here. And we want each and every one of these to be able to show up on the schedule. And we can see the properties for those on the schedule. So the fastest way to do that is to simply select on one, right click after it's been highlighted, and we're gonna select all instances of this kind of footing in the entire project. Notice how they all turn blue. In fact, even if there had been some off the screen since we selected the entire project, they would have turned blue as well. Once they've all been selected, we can go up to their type properties, and that's by clicking on edit type, and we can enter in some certain information about these. Now, in this case, it's going to be the type mark. And in this case, we're just going to do F dash. And now technically, we could put any piece of information that we wanted in here. The F is going to stand for footing. The dash or the minus sign is just sort of the space in between the next thing. If we had 14 different types of footings, this could be F1, F2, F3, F4. In this case, I'm going to leave it blank, but there's absolutely no reason why we couldn't put F12 or any sort of number like that. And the reason is, is in that filter for the schedule that we originally set up, we, we told it to be a type mark that begins with F and dash. So as long as this type mark starts with the F and the dash, it'll show up on the schedule. We'll click on OK to that. Now let's take the time to go back to our schedule and take a look at it. So we're going to come back down on the list. We're going to try to find schedules and quantities under the project browser and then just double click Structural Foundation Schedule. And now we can see that it has the type mark of F dash. We can see the type of footing that it is, as well as the dimensions that are associated with it. Now I am gonna leave the title of this alone, but if we wanted to call it footing schedules, all you'd have to do is come up here on the list, highlight inside here, and then you could just type in whatever it is that you wanted to call it, such as footing schedule. So schedules can automatically generate their totals on virtually anything that you want to schedule. All you need to do is specify the properties by which you want to pull that information and Revit will take care of the rest.